Oh, Lati da, Lati da. Hey, we're here this afternoon, and we have a group of Lander students. Yes, they are political science majors, and yes, they are back here with Chad Kinsella. Did have some nice comments on Facebook, Chad, yesterday on our discussion yesterday afternoon. How about that? That's great. Absolutely, absolutely. But we have with us Tanisha Elder. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? Very good. And uh, what year in school are you? I'm a junior. You're a junior. Yes. You're getting scared. You're almost a senior. I know. It's, it's going <laughs> so fast. It is going so fast. What do you want to do when you grow up? I'd like to be a lawyer. You'd like to be a lawyer? Yes. Why a lawyer? Um, you make a lot of money. No. <laughs> um, they can make a lot of money. <laughs> Yes. Um, I just want to work, like, be able to help people who won't are able to afford it. You know, if I become like a defense attorney okay. or public defender. Public defender. Okay. And where are you from? Columbia. Columbia. Yes. Okay. Came up here to Lander. I know the big old town in Lander. What well, made you come to Lander? Just out of curiosity. I love the campus, okay. and um, the missions was um, very helpful when I first came compared to other campuses. Well, that's great. So it helped a lot. All right, well, we're going to get ready and talk about the election here in just a second. That is Tanisha Elder. And then we have Jameson Nicholas. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, that's a great radio voice there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> You blew me away there, <laughs> Thank Jameson. You. All right, you are majoring in political science because? Um, I, I came to Lander as a business major, and I, I, in high school, I took a government class, and I got a 100 on the exam and, and decided I would just change my major. I really had no idea what I was getting into, but I've loved it thus far, so it worked out great. All right, and what did you do in the political campaigns that just finished up? Did you work on any, or what did you do? I did not. I just kind of watched from the sidelines this time. Um, okay. Just kind of spectated. Spectated. So, yes. Okay. And what do you want to grow be when you grow up? Uh, I would love to hold office in South Carolina. I want to represent this great state um, and and uh, keep it keep it where it's at and, uh, and keep moving it forward. So, keep moving it forward. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. Well, that sounds good. That is Jameson Nicholson. Now, Jameson, are you are you a Republican or a Democrat or what do you call yourself? Um, Independent, I, I, green. I'm pretty moderate. Um, moderate. Yes, I like to keep my mind open. Um, I like to evaluate both sides, uh, and uh, both sides definitely uh, have their pros and cons. That's for sure. Absolutely, they do. All right, we'll be talking about that a little bit more. Tanisha, now where do you fall in the scheme of things? Oh, I'm fall around the same as Jameson. I do believe both sides do have their pros and cons, and I don't want to go in blindly to one side. You no, know, um, so I'd be independent. Independent. Okay. Is that because you're a political science major, or you know? honestly, that really did change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now we have Richard Stone. Richard Stone, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's nice to be here. It's nice to have you here. And uh, what year are you at Lander? I'm actually a senior. This is my last semester. Oh my God! You'll have to make up your mind what you want to do. Oh, actually, I'm already done. Oh, you're already done? Yeah. What have you made up your mind to do? I'm actually going to work as a campaign manager to help uh, politicians get elected in the uh, upstate Georgia and North Carolina region. Wasn't this election quite enough for you? Oh, no, it's just half the fun. <laughs> half the fun? Yeah. And you worked with you worked on a political campaign? Yes, I worked in Mike Pitt's campaign in Lawrence to help him get reelected to House District 14. Is that your first campaign, or have you worked on other campaigns? That's my first campaign, actually. And uh, I guess you must have liked the experience. Oh, absolutely. Everybody was fun to work with, and Ed Taylor put up a great fight. Okay, and what do you call yourself? A Republican, Democrat, or a Libertarian, Green Party? What are you? Um, because I want to be a campaign manager, I'm independent. I do not want to uh, cut myself off from any source of monetary gain. Well, there you go, folks. You have heard all sides in the middle as of this moment. That's right. So we are here at Sharp Facets Gallery this afternoon, 4.15 in the afternoon. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some interesting topics and getting some, I know, interesting perspective this afternoon. But we'll hear a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I've got an interesting afternoon, I can tell you that, and I'm excited to have it. I have Tanisha Elder, Jameson Nicholson, and Richard Stone here with us. 
We've got a sophomore, a junior, and a senior, all with a little bit different perspective. I think you're going to find some interesting questions that I'm going to try to ask, and we'll see if they can answer them. I'm sure they can. Um, but um, I was asking you off the air, since President Obama was reelected, it was a fierce competition. It was a very close competition. We all know that jobs was the issue. Um, President Obama has not really done a real good job on the economy. Why was President Obama re-elected? Why was President Obama re-elected? You want to answer that one for me, Richard? Uh, absolutely. Oh, uh, I'll take a swing at it. Um, swing? Yeah. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer. We're discussing. Really isn't. <laughs> really isn't. Um, well, it's more than just jobs. You have more more to do than that, uh, just that. Uh, it, in the recent moment, well, in the rec right before the election, you had Hurricane Sandy that came in. Uh, Obama handled that well. He worked with Republican governors, handled that. Uh, he got a nice bear hug from Governor Christie. A nice bear hug, you know, even though she said a few things that weren't quite nice about him earlier, but uh, that's fine. Um, it, he's worked well in the foreign policy arena, uh, though, that he's kind of rebuilt some of our connections with other countries tried to work with the European Union, tried to work to ease our relations with Russia, and tried to help in regards to China and Japan. But it's it's just as Jameson was saying off the air, it has to do with the districting of the United States as to where you have large city districts, which are predominantly where Democrats will be elected, and the majority of the state will be Republican because all the districts outside there are predominantly Republican. So President Obama was re-elected because, because the, pe the people that okay. in the districts, they control the districts, but their population count mm -hmm. does not uh, does not beat out the population count of all the cities combined. It's a numbers game, as of course it is an election. You compete to see who can win the most, and Obama just had the popular support, even right. if it was about three million. That was pretty close, wasn't it? Do you think this? Um, um, uh, Jameson, do you think that uh, the hurricane, actually the storm Sandy, had an effect on on who won the election? Absolutely. Um, this is something we've actually talked about in class recently. Um, the, uh, Romney had a lot of momentum coming into the election, a lot of momentum. Um, I, I predicted he would, he would win a lot more states than he actually did. And uh, when, when the hurricane strikes, um, was that called the October surprise? Yeah, that, the October surprise, exactly. Um, people, people see Obama in a different light. They see him, he's not quite as bipartisan uh, as, he was, as he was claimed to be. They see him working well with the Republican Party. They see him, the country sees him uh, caring for the little people. Um, and this, this makes uh, his, his, just his image, it, it increases. It, and not only that, not only does it promote him, it also slowed down Romney's momentum. Um, so I think it had a huge, a huge factor. Um, and determining, uh, determining this race, actually. It's pretty hard to order up a hurricane, though, isn't it? It is. It is very hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I, uh, some people may make that claim. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, it's pretty but hard October surprise, that. it happens. Absolutely, it does. So, Tanisha, how do you feel that, um, why do you think President Obama won the election? Um, Mike Richard and Jameson, I do agree the hurricane has it's something to do with it. It made Obama um, seem more relatable. Um, he didn't just seem. You know. I don't think that. Do you know? Do we think he had a problem of being relatable? Because I mean, after all, he's on uh, Jay Leno. He's on The View. He's everywhere. I don't think. Does he have a problem with relatable? No, but when compared to um, Romney, mm -hmm. his relatability skyrocketed. I guess after Hurricane, sure. after Hurricane Sandy. Um, would you kind of agree with that? Oh, I mean, he did get a boost from it. There is, there is no doubt to that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I'm just saying, I don't think he had a relatability problem. Maybe he had a ability, inability to cross the lines. Where uh, Governor, I think actually, if we really thought about it, maybe Governor Christie is the one that helped him the most. Because, and but on the flip side, Governor Christie, what was he doing? He was getting support for his state. He was doing what any governor or anybody in that position would do, right? Yes, I totally agree. He was playing politics. 
Oh, playing politics. <laughs> That's true. So what else do you think, though? What I mean, was that the only issue that pulled Obama over the top? Do you think otherwise Romney would have won? Um, I will Mm, tough question. Very tough question. I believe it would have been a lot closer than what it was. Um, but I just believe Obama just had the popular vote slim. We just had it going in. Um, then it kind of pushed him over with um, not only the hurricane, but just his debate skills as well. Um, during the last debate, I think kind of helped him as well. What did you think? What did we think of the second debate where they did the town hall and they were circling each other and getting in each other's face? Who wants to take that one? What do you What do you think about that one, Richard? Uh, it actually reminded me of the uh, Gore Bush debate when uh, Al Gore walked up to Bush while he was talking to the audience. It kind of startled them. Mm -hmm. I actually thought something similar was going to happen when they were face to face arguing. It was uh, quite tense, actually. <laughs> it was quite tense. What do we think about Candy Crowley reading that uh, reading that piece uh, about? Uh, oh yes, he did say this about the uh, about I, the terrorist attack. I wasn't too happy about that because I think that her job wasn't to jump in like that. She was just supposed to be a moderator, mm -hmm. and I think she stepped out of line doing that. What do you What do you think, Jameson? Uh, I think it's absolutely right. Uh, she her job is moderator. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fact checker. Um, regardless of how I feel personally, regardless of how anyone feels, uh, that's not what she was supposed to do. Um, and and I, I honestly, I think it could be argued that she really didn't even do quite quite a, uh, a decent job at moderating. Who either. do you think did of the um, three debates? Who did the best job? Did we watch all three debates? Honestly, was, uh, Bob Schieffer was the last one, and the first one was uh, Chris. Let's see, Chris. What was his name? The first debate, second debate, or third debate? Which moderator did the best job? Do you think? Honestly, I I don't even know. I wouldn't I wouldn't select any of them to moderate any kind of um, debate that I was organizing. Um, that's for sure. Um, well, you should know that Bob Schieffer figures he'll probably never get to moderate another yeah. one. It's seventies <laughs> plus. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. <laughs> All right. Well, um, gosh, uh, Chad, what do you think we ought to talk about here? Well, very quickly, just for the record, I, I want to point out that Jameson was uh, in the mock presidential debate was uh, domestic policy Obama, and in the in the foreign policy realm, Richard was uh, Romney. So I think that they're already they're kind of going back to this uh, to their mock debates, if you will, they're already starting to argue. So <laughs> something good there. So. Um, there's all kinds of things to talk about. I think something we were talking about outside, as we were coming in, we were talking about uh, the Senate and the, and the fact um, Republicans beforehand, they, I mean, a couple of months ago, there was a, the idea that Republicans would actually take the Senate. They actually lost two seats. And uh, we were discussing just some of the, some of the uh, people who were running on the Republican side. And, and even if you look back at 2010, some of the recruits that the Republicans had were... Uh, Less than stellar, perhaps, is the nicest way to, to, to put it. So that's, that may be something uh, definitely to, to talk about and something that, that I think everybody here had, had uh, something to, to say about. So that, I think that's also important because although there's a whole lot of elections that did, a uh, presidential election occurred, but I mean, there's a whole lot of other elections. And uh, could Republicans have done a lot more had they had the, the Senate and the House? Absolutely. But now, I mean, that's, that's now completely out. So the, the Senate al is also important. Um, so that might be something else we're talking about. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, so what do you what do you think, Richard? The uh, the Senate, as Chad said, lost a couple of seats. Um, uh, where do you think where Where do you think they're headed? Uh, Why do you think they lost the seats? Maybe well, it would be a better question. It's because of interesting statements they made, uh, yes. uh, making light of a certain terminology, uh, rape being that word. Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to define it in a way that is pro-life is not the best way to try to push your position out in the public, especially when the media is watching constantly and will turn anything you say against you. I that, That's actually one of the reasons why I want to go into campaign management, because I want to be there to help stop things like that happening. Oh, you can't help somebody <laughs> who's on the stage and decides to get on a roll. Well, I want to have like a debate, debate pra <laughs> practice session before... You know, that brings up a good question. You know, I, I really was surprised when President Obama says, vote, revenge, vote. What do we think about that? I mean, I, I really thought that that was, a, uh, that, was a, uh, that was an unbelievable statement. And yet he carried it off and carried it through. But uh, revenge, vote? 
Uh, unfortunately, in the uh, the campaign process, you're going to have some mud slung around, and that is just one of the unfortunate phrases thrown around. It, it did fly. It, it did go sure. through. Uh, I, I don't I don't like it. Um, I'm sure a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, well, I think that my point my point I was going to with that is I don't think that was planned. Oh no, that's uh, obviously you'll have improv. Like certain things will yes. just come up off their mind. But I mean, he. he I think the rape thing me, probably was something he just improved right up there. Oh well, you know what? <laughs> and then we'll just call it natural selection on the political scale. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just. I think you're right. <laughs> and yeah. he just got what uh, was coming to him. I hate to be like that, but. But yeah, I mean, Obama's uh, you know, Obama. Just to be fair, Obama and Romney, both of them are great political speak. I mean, public speakers. So I mean, they can't improv like that. Some people aren't, and they don't need to, and they just need to stick with the script. Absolutely. Now, Jameson, just before we're going to go to the news here in just a second, but what do you think of Vice President Joe Biden um, and his ability to improv? I was worried in the vice president's debate. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I was. <laughs> um, all of the debates seemed fairly close, um, and by close, I mean they were both off. All of them were awful, um, but um, <laughs> I think somehow he seemed to maintain in, in the in the VP debate. He seemed to maintain um, some credibility, um, unlike what we've seen in the past. Um, he's one of those what people. What about his expressions and everything? This, uh, it's, it's the same way. It's, he's one of those people that um, you you don't really want to see him. Debate. You don't really want to see him talk, uh, and as long as he sticks to foreign policy, he should he'll be okay. Um, but outside of that realm, he, he has to be really careful. He has to be really careful. <laughs> That's why they deep sixed him for a week, isn't it? <laughs> I think so. Hey, I'm Ann Eller. I'm here with uh, Jameson Nichols, Richard Stone, and Tanisha Elder. When we come back, we've got more to talk about. If you've got a topic you'd like us to uh, approach, hey, we'll we'll take it on right here. This is WCRS. Give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. We'll be back. Uh, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Right. We're, we are right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery, 4.36 in the afternoon. God, I wish you could hear these off-air comments we got going on here this afternoon. Pretty exciting stuff. Hey, I have uh, Tanisha Elder. She is a political science major, pre-law and international relations. She is a junior at Lander and actually from down there in Columbia, came all the way up here to go to school. She's with us this afternoon. Richard Stone is a senior at Lander. He actually worked on Mike Pitt's campaign, and that's why he wants to go into uh, campaign work. Then we have Jameson Nichols. He is Nicholas. He is from um, Simpsonville. He's a sophomore at Lander, majoring in political science with an emphasis in public administration. And he has interned at the South Carolina House of Representatives and lead or involved in numerous organizations on campus. So we've been getting some young perspective here. Usually my guests are older. This is an experience, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we have Chad Kinsella. He's here to keep his uh, students in line, I think. Would that be right, Chad? Yes, it is. <laughs> Keeping an eye on him. Keeping an eye on him. Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about is with the election process, what happened here in South Carolina with so many candidates being taken off the ballot then having to get back on the ballot, petition candidates. I think this really affected the election this year. Uh, there is, in my mind, no doubt, even candidates that got back on the ballot as petition candidates, of course, they had a tough time. Why? Why did they have a tough time? Tanisha, Richard, somebody want to answer? Mm -hmm. Tanisha, oh, go ahead. They didn't have enough time to actually campaign. I think they had enough time to campaign, but on your ballots, what did you have? Straight Republican, straight Democrat, or go through and, and uh, what shall we say, cherry pick the list, right? Yeah. Yes. So um, petition candidates didn't have a party, did they? They didn't. No. 
So that made it tough. And one of the things that I also thought was most difficult is to be a writing candidate, isn't it? So I guess one of my questions is, how do we get the right people in the job? Is it just by party, Democrat, Republican? Or how, can, how, does, how do we get the public to look at the ballot as best person for the job? You know, I'll, quite frankly, I couldn't vote one party or the other. I had to go through and vote candidate by candidate because I had feelings on which was best for the job. Who would like to uh, take a stab at that one? I'll, okay, I'll, Jameson. I think the, I think the most important thing, um, first we need people who are actually um, <laughs> right for the job, to run for the job. Um, and uh, But do they have to have the right party in order to win? It, yes, it depends. They do. It depends on where you are. It seems. Um, uh, I, I just. I think that's a travesty because we had we had petition candidates. Some of the petition candidates might actually have been better than the straight party candidate. We had some write-in candidates that uh, worked very hard that might have been better for the job. So how do we get people not to pull just that straight party? Educating the voters. Um, I, and this is something that I've always promoted. I wish people would, and of course there's a time dilemma. Uh, people have lives, people are busy. Um, I wish people could take more time um, to, to see all the candidates. I mean, uh, personally, I wish I could take even more time to, to even carefully, uh, uh, more carefully select uh, and research the candidates that I've chosen. Um, I know personally, I'm, I'm, I've never been a fan of straight, straight ticket voting. Um, I'm, not, I'm not one who does. Um, just because I, so I'll, sometimes I do like that experience, even if I don't agree with the parties, especially at maybe the smaller levels. Um, I definitely like that experience there. Um, so it, it's, it's definitely educating the voters. A lot of people um, are one issue voters, um, so they feel like they, they're really hard towards that party on, on both sides. Um, so maybe if, if people, if we just get people to pay attention <laughs> um, more uh, and just in research the candidates and of course there's a time of dilemma but well I think here in Greenwood we had 69 percent of the voters turn out here in Greenwood County that was unusually high I mean usually uh, you know if we get 25 percent that's that's pretty good this was 69 percent almost 70 percent um, how much higher do you think it could go Depends on who's running. Um, <laughs> oh, so it depends on the election, right? Um, it, it depends on where the economy is. Depends on who's running. Um, that can definitely uh, depends on how how much people love or hate the incumbent. Uh, mm -hmm. Depends on the geographic uh, where where you are in the country. Um, can what do you think about the fact that uh, Romney and and President Obama didn't spend hardly any money in South Carolina? I mean, as a radio station owner, I was appalled. Um, what do I feel? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, you know, you talk about people getting involved in the incumbents and everything, but yeah. they didn't spend any money here in South Carolina. Um, they didn't I, have to. They didn't have exactly. to. Exactly. I don't feel it. I don't feel it surprising. There's a lot more of battleground states where they spend all their money. Ohio, numerous, numerous trips. Ohio, sure. Florida. Oh, I um, know, but I'm just saying. You so, know. It, I mean, it is upsetting. You know, we would like we would like some more attention. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't I don't think we're gonna have, we're gonna have it for a while, unfortunately. Um, so, I mean. That's the way it is. All right, uh, Tanisha, what do you think about getting people involved in the process of voting? What do you think? Um, I do agree with Jameson that uh, um, we have to get the voters educated. Um, a lot of people just vote on who their parents voted for or just stay with the party, kind of in the family, um, especially in the South, um, kind of close minded I would say, because even before I became a political science major, I just voted based on emotions to who my family members were voting on. Um, I've been able to form my own opinion on candidates just by researching them and everything. So I do agree that uneducated masses is what we have now. Um, and improving that would honestly um, give us more variety in government. What do you think, um, Richard, is the difference between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party? And what has the Republican Party got to do to become more effective in today's world? Um, I personally think that they need a better grassroots uh, movement. Uh, they need to push toward incorporating the Hispanic vote into the party. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to work with them because they're more of a uh, they have more of a core family style, which more resonates with the Republican base. 
They also kind of like uh, Senator Rubio was talking about. Exactly, that. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, also, they have uh, more of a religious focus, which would resonate well, even though it is Catholic Protestantism. Right. But it, it, that they it's work. It's religion. Together. Yeah, it's religion. So I mean, they can work together. But uh, I think it, I think it comes down to uh, and also a change of strategy because in the, this campaign, the Republicans sort of went for the burn at the end strategy where they put in all their effort near the end of the campaign, mm -hmm. where Obama's campaign more of push out, uh, put more of the resources into the beginning portion of the campaign. You think that's why Romney lost? Because uh, President Obama and the Obama team had uh, pretty much destroyed him before he ever got started? I think that their, uh, their ability to check out demographics and actually where the growth in the country occurring is occurring actually allowed for Obama to go to the correct places that would eventually lead to push the swing states in his favor. So they had, it was just another grassroots problem and the fact that they used their information more wisely. I, I think that it's not an issue of money. Obviously, both campaigns spend a very modest a amount. Modest <laughs> amount? I I'm, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to, but, uh, uh, but I think it's just the way they use their resources was the problem. They use their resources. Now, um, um, James, what do you think is going to be the wave of the future for communicating with voters? How are they going to how are they going to do their political campaigns? Is the sign thing going to still be a status symbol? Or are we going to use more uh, social media? Or how do we see? Or is the newspaper a good place to go? How do you see political campaigns futuristically? It's already on the way. Using Facebook as as the number one. I mean, I know my newsfeed is constantly flooded with political information uh, from uh, the presidents for candidates. Um, it's definitely Twitter. It's definitely going to go news media. The newspaper, uh, maybe. I mean, it, it depends on the audience you're reaching. Um, I know a lot of younger people don't really read the newspaper. We, we kind of Google everything. Um, so even Wikipedia, which isn't necessarily the best the best place sometimes. Oh, come on. It's all. on the Internet. It uh, must be true, right? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to look at James's <laughs> papers a bit more closely. No, no, no. I, mean, <laughs> no, I always... No, no. It's um, Wikipedia is just a quick thing. No, it's... um. <laughs> it's definitely social media, uh, for social sure. Media. The signs, what about the signs, signs? What's the signs, signs, signs everywhere. Sign. What do you? Signs work at, at much better at a local level because just because people don't, and, and even, even people who are in very involved in politics don't really pay attention to the local level too much. Um, but they tend to vote um, if you can get your his name ID. They see the name, they vote that way. Um, and, and there's so it doesn't have, to be, doesn't have to be what the candidate stands for. It's just they see the sign. Um, at the low, at the lower, at the lower levels, uh, yeah, actually, I'm not, not, not completely, but there, there is evidence to back this. Um, mm -hmm. That's why you would see so many local levels. I mean, compared to the Obama Romney signs, much, much, much more local level signs everywhere, all over the place. Sure. Um, and you'd be surprised with all the strategy it takes to set up signs. Um, in the one day that I, I did that. You yeah. did that. Richard, what do you have to say about the sign issue since you worked on campaign and everything? Um, I, I think they're a, very, they're a very important part of the campaign just because of the exposure. They're, they're essentially miniature commercials set on the side of the road that you just said, there's your candidate's name. And uh, you put them at choke points at uh, certain intersections of the uh, municipality that mm -hmm. uh, most of the traffic is going to come through. Sure. You place them where the majority of your base is going to be at to get them to light, uh, well, elevate them and make sure that they come and vote. And I, I think that uh, it, it's, I think it's going to remain an important part of the campaign for the future, unless that it just all turns into uh, the internet, which I don't. I think it's going to be a uh, mixture of both for the foreseeable future. What do you feel about newspaper? Uh, well, the newspaper is a uh, excellent source of information for the uh, older uh, demographic. Mm -hmm. uh, younger demographics don't generally read that because they take the majority of their news sources from the internet or from other sources or other sources rather right. and uh, I think that we'll have to wait and see what the uh, internet generation will do once they get older before we can actually determine if they're going to switch to newspapers or just continue using the internet because we have internet uh, uh, newspaper sources actually putting their information on the internet so it might just 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 be a transition that we're going to switch to the internet over the newspapers Sure. Do you read the local newspaper? Yes, uh, the Index Journal, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. How about you, Jameson? Um, every once in a while, every I do. Once while. Every once in a while. Um, been insanely busy. Insanely lately. busy. Insanely okay, busy. okay. Good, <laughs> um, good cover, good busy. cover. I'm used to dealing with young people and stuff like this. Okay, Tanisha, how about you? Um, Occasionally. Occasionally? Occasionally. 
Well, I mean, this is, that's just a quick survey to me on whether people actually are young people are reading newspapers. You're right. I think it is an excellent demographic for an older generation, but is that new, younger generation? What do you think, Chad? Well, it's interesting. Also, a lot of newspapers, including the New York Times, even in the index, you know, all the way down to the Index Journal, they do have a, a presence online, and, it, and so they, they are making those, and that is something available. And it's interesting, my home newspaper, the Cincinnati Inquirer, I've been looking at the articles for free for a long time. They have a I guess they, they check my IP address or whatever it might be, and now I'm out of articles. So now I'm actually going to have to buy a you know, subscription, and I may have to do it because I want to know what's going on in, in, you know, in Cincinnati. Um, so again, that, that may be the way of the future. New York Times is doing it. Um, Index Journal, is, is done, you know, they have a really good online website. So again, sure. I think that they are starting to make, you know, realize that, that maybe the, the physical paper is, is kind of maybe not doing as well. It, it is decreased, the, the readership is decreasing. So uh, ultimately, it, it, there is, there's going to have to be a bigger online presence, and I think a lot of newspapers have, have picked up on that and are, and are addressing that accordingly. Absolutely. Hey, I'm here with uh, Professor Chad Kinsella. I'm here with Tanisha Elder, Richard Stone, and Jameson Nicholson, Nichols, and yes, Nicholas, sorry, Jameson Nicholas. And I am Ann Eller right here with you at Sharp Facets Gallery. We're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors. And yes, we'll be All right. Right, back. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery. We've spent a lot of time talking about national politics, and that's probably where we're going to see stay. But uh, one of the questions that did come in, Ray Goddell said that, uh, what has happened to produce the harshness in local elections right here on the local level? You used to only see that in the big cities. Why do you think that uh, that has happened? Uh, well, it's just as we were discussing before, it's, uh, it's trickled down from the national government. It's, uh, they this is trickled down the economics? No, this is trickled down uh, <laughs> partisan politics. Oh, yes. partisan politics, yeah, okay. I apologize. Um, it also, there's also a factor that we didn't bring up, which I think is pretty important, is that in a campaign, you don't have just the candidate working in it. You have multiple people, and they will go off and do things that are not part of the campaign's pl uh, main plan. As in, we were talking about the Stumbo issue with the campaign signs that were saying Stumbo supports guns in public schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know that his opponent necessarily did that, but we can't, there has been rumors that it might have been people on his campaign. We do not know that, of course. But it's, it's a mul the problem is that you have so many multiple factors working in campaigns mm -hmm. that some people can just turn especially vicious whenever the competition heats up. So, so we're just saying that uh, because it's that way in Washington and everything, we've, we've got to fight the same on the local level? Oh, I, I don't think it's the best way to fight that uh, But, I mean... That, that some people do think resort that, to that resort to any way to win possible. Just as I was saying before, uh, the there is no secret way to win a campaign anymore. It's all secrets aren't really secrets for long. Mm -hmm. It can be taken out and both sides use probably the most efficient strategies that they can come up with and once they see that it's not achieving the results that they desire, they will resort to more drastic measures to try to uh, receive a shock value which generally works better as the media uses shock value to mo move the opinion of the public in different directions. Jameson, what do you think about the media? What what part does the media play in this whole issue? You know, there's a lot of conversation about uh, unfairness, uh, how how easy they are on President Obama, how how they do this, and how they do the Republicans. Is that true, in um, your opinion? The media plays a huge factor, and and the media the media is absolutely biased. Uh, every media station is absolutely biased. I, mean, I haven't. Found one yet that's not. Um, unfortunately, you have to every media source Even you take. Even Walter Cronkite, and that's the way it was. <laughs> um, it just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, from personal. <laughs> yeah, um, it just it's really you have to take with a grain of salt from every to everybody. Um, the media media knows it. it people. The majority. Why is people, the media? Why is the media biased? Why can't we have just this is the facts, ma'am, and here it goes. Um, just the think, facts, isn't that what they used to say in Dragnet? Just the facts, just the is facts. that right? Yes, just the yeah. facts, man. Yeah. I think I think the people, um, because people because people run the media outlets and people are naturally biased, um, and and for some people it's extremely difficult to keep their biases out of of their personal work. And something that we've talked about in Dr. Kinsella's political philosophy class, uh, we've talked a lot about Thomas Hobbes, and um, and I'm going to kind of relate this all together. Thomas Hobbes talks about. Um, 
uh, it, it takes one person uh, to 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 kind of attack somebody to, to for everyone to get suspicious. Um, as far as long as this, all it takes is one person in the media uh, to do anything biased until everyone feels they have to do something biased to keep up, um, and and, it, and that's how you lead to the split. You know, obviously biased news channels that we have now. Um, but it's just something you have to take with a grain of salt. And uh, the media sources know that the people. Um, a lot of people don't have time to do to do extensive research. Um, luckily, I'm in college. I, I'm a political science major. This is kind of what I do. Um, but for most people, they don't have time, uh, so they, they rely on these media outlets, and I, I think that's a problem. And I think it's something that's not going to stop in the foreseeable future. What about you, Tanisha? What do you feel about the media? Um, I feel like the media, um, they are biased, but they're also reaching an audience. You know, they want to get out this latest story. And they don't want to lose their um, viewing audience. Um, their edge, maybe. Yeah, their edge. Mm -hmm. And they don't want the numbers to plummet because they make their money. It's all about you know money and keeping the audience high and pleasing the public. <coughs> That's all they're here to do. So they twist the um, story the way they would like. You'll enjoy it, and everybody's happy. That's all they're looking for. Yeah. What do you What do you think, Richard? I, I think it comes into two points. Uh, as you immerse yourself in the world of politics, you are going to become, even if you are one of the most unbiased people, you'll eventually start leaning inadvertently one way or the other and start focusing more on one direction or another, even if you don't, it's involuntary almost, because if you prefer it, you're obviously going to favor it, and it's a subconscious. Well, we all have beliefs. Uh, exactly, but right. it, it, it's, it's just something that, it's, it's impossible, but it, I agree that viewer for the media they need viewers to make money and they want to have the shock value from certain stories is going to draw in the most viewers because the public generally is not as well informed on politics because they as it has been said before they are very busy mm -hmm. but when something shocks out of them like Benghazi they're gonna pay attention immediately and want to figure out what is going on even if it is suppressed uh, well, that's a very interesting point, though, because Benghazi was very much carried by Fox News. They've done a very in-depth study of it. They, they have found out a lot of information, and yet uh, CNN, MSNBC, and some of the other stations have soft-pedaled it. Oh, I, I, I was expecting MSNBC to soft-pedal it quite obviously. Oh, quite. Okay. That's sure. just going to happen. But um, th that... Because they're... Oh, well, well, yeah, they yeah. lean in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. That's Fox News. Right, exactly. <laughs> um, I, they're to the left, okay? <laughs> right. All right, but uh, it, it, and, and unfortunately, if you want to take the neutral view from it, it seems as though it's going to be in any scenario, whichever favors one side, they're obviously going to put the most focus on it. Sure. Even if it was, if this would have been a reverse situation and it would have been McCain in office, it might have, might have been reversed. We don't know that. That's obviously a what is what is scenario. Mm -hmm. But that happens quite often in the media that they they go for the shock value, and that's what they need to stay on the air. Sure, absolutely. Hey, you know what? You're listening to WCRS right here in Greenwood, South Carolina. I am Ann Eller. I have some Lander students and their professor, Dr. Uh, Chad Kinsella. We're going to do a little wrap-up here just to uh, finish this up. Um, Chad. Yes, ma'am. What do you think of our discussion so far this evening? I've, I've actually I've, I've tried to sit back and I've, I've uh, rather enjoyed it. This is this is fun. So I've, it, it's great to kind of have uh, have the students in and kind of in, and hear them talk. And it, it's uh, I've, I've learned a lot from from them. So this, yeah, this you're is, gonna, uh, you've this learned is you're going to have to check Jameson's reports. Yes, a lot I do. <laughs> awfully uh, <laughs> speaking, awfully favorably about Wikipedia. Uh, so, um, <laughs> But then it's, it's it's really good. Um, um, it's it's very nice to kind of to, to hear have students in this situation and kind of hear that they they uh, they do uh, they have a lot of really good information. So it, it makes me excited, you know, for them. So um, it's it's a good thing. Absolutely, think, so. it is a good thing. A as a wind up here, I want to ask. I think I'm going to ask each of you. Um, Richard, what do you think of the future of our country? Are you optimistic, pessimistic, on hold? What do you think? Well, uh, I think the American people in general want to be an optimistic people, and I like to stand by that no matter what the uh, current election uh, results have turned out to be, because there, all, there will always be another election in four years, depending on if you won or not in terms of which way what, what about what about the fact that this was the most important election of our lifetime, and the direction of our country is going to be determined by this election? Do we have four more years? 
Yes, I think we have four more years. Uh, the most important election of our lifetimes every four years, though, as we've always seen in the media. That's another thing that gets brought up again by the media, just the, sh the shock value. Um, I, I, though I do think it is important in the evolution of our country, but I think that uh, with our government split the way it is, hopefully that they'll be able to come out with a uh, better resolution that's happened in the last four years. Okay, one more question for you. The fiscal cliff is very near. The lame duck session goes back to work next week. Is it going to be a lame duck session, or are we going to be able to see the way the next four years are going to go based on the lame duck session as they go back to work next week? Okay. Uh, in regards to the fiscal cliff, I think that they're going, they will have a resolution of that because that hurts everybody. Social, social uh, works are going to be cut to mm -hmm. a way that is nobody likes. The military will be cut mm -hmm. it, it, into a way that we do not need for our national security. It's, it's, everybody's going to have to come together to fix that, no matter who's president, who's in Congress, who's in the Senate. Uh, I think that that's just it's a necessity, and I hope that they understand the importance of that and kind of push politics aside for that point. Because if once we reach these points, then people start losing more jobs and the economy goes just falls apart, since we're just barely recovering now, I think that would be a disaster. Okay. All right, Jameson, question for you. Okay, we have the next four years. We're just discussing whether this was the most important election. We're talking about the fiscal cliff. Some people say we should go ahead and fall off that fiscal cliff. Now, you are a sophomore, so you're not really in the job market yet. But what do you say about the future of our country here? Um, I, I am optimistic about the future, um, even though it may seem a little bleak right now. Um, we've always, as a nation, the last 200 years, we've always been able to recover when it seems bleak. Um, that's who we are. That's who we are as a people. That's who we are. And when it, when it gets like that, we always, we always come together. And I feel that uh, with enough future leadership, people like myself, like Richard and Tanisha, um, headed by great professors like Dr. Kinsella, we, oh, we'll that's good suck-up here this afternoon, no, no. Uh, Jameson. No, I am impressed. No, no. <laughs> Don't. Don't check my papers. No, um, no he's a great professor. Um, but um, I, I, I'm excited. I've met a lot of people who feel like, it, that are my age, in, in 20, 30 years, 40 years, we'll be, we'll be, we could be leading this country. And I'm excited about that. And I feel like as long as we... Uh, maintain it until we can get there, um, that we'll be able, I'm, I'm very excited about the future, even though it may seem um, a little bleak right now. I don't think it's anything we can't, re we can't recover from and fix. Okay. Now, that's spoken as a true young person, the optimistic and the hope. But what about for the people that are in that 50-plus uh, age group? who have lost all their money in the stock market when they've crashed. They have, survived. they have basically survived. They are not looking at retiring anytime soon because they cannot afford to retire. And for a lot of them, they don't even have a job. What do you think about for that part of our country, that segment of society? Um, what we can do is we can hope that um, our leaders at the national level, the state level, and the local level, um, particularly the national level, will put aside their partisan differences and be able to work together and be able to see that there's people who who need them now. Um, and if, uh, I'm, I, I'm optimistic. I'm going to maintain my, opti my okay, optimism. Okay, I'm just asking. Um, hey, I'm just asking But I feel, I feel that they, they can do it. They can do it. Um, it's going to take some work and some effort. Um, Absolutely. Now, do you, so, and do you think that with a Republican House, a Democratic Senate and a Democratic President, after four years of the gridlock that we've had, the low, low ratings of our uh, Congress people, do you think that everybody's going to turn over a new leaf? I mean, they've been hugging up and kissing up and saying they're going to all work together. Do you believe them? <laughs> Once again, I'm going to try to maintain my optimism here. Um, uh, I'm. Like I said, I, I'm going to take it with a great assault. Uh, um, You're going to take it with a great assault. Great assault. Um, I feel, I feel that to, if they don't get to work together, then we will go off that fiscal cliff. I feel uh, absolutely. They, they need to work together, um, and I feel that they they're starting to see that. And I feel like the country's once again a country we're we're getting together and we're we're putting the pressure on. And this is this is this is go time. Um, I feel that since there's, uh, Obama's not going to have another term, uh, president spent a lot of their time. We're running for re-election, getting ready for re-election, and now that that's not in question, um, maybe they'll be able to work together.
Okay. All right. And Tanisha, same, actually, same type of question. Do you think that our president, uh, that President Obama and the Congress and the Senate are going to put aside their partisan politics, and when they come back on the lame duck session, start working together? Um, they kind of have no choice. Um, in order for us to progress as a country, that we need that cooperation in the um, government at the federal level. Um, so well, they do have a choice. They could just keep doing nothing. We will continue to be in the same state that we're in, and it may even get worse. So in order for us as America to get any better and become the force that we have been in the past, they need to come and work together. Well, who needs to who needs to put their hand out to work together? Everybody it has to be a cooperation. Um, they each need to come together, um, be the bigger party, and um, just get it done. Um, it's, we need time, we need change, and we need to move forward and able to do that. We need them to work together and be cooperative. Be cooperative. Okay, Chad Kinsella, do you think that uh, the House, the Senate, and the President are going to work together? Are we going to see a change, which you know could be next week in a lame duck session, because it's not going to change much whether it's a lame duck session or whether it's after the first of the year. My thought, and this is a, a guess, I do think that perhaps in this lame duck session they, they, <coughs> that they may get some things uh, accomplished again. So really, ultimately, they, the status quo has been maintained. So now there's no, no there, as, as was mentioned, you know, there is no more election at this point. Um, and again, there, there are a lot of people who aren't going to be around anymore, particularly in the Senate, that um, it, this is their opportunity, perhaps, to, to, to get it done. So I'm hoping that it will not be a lame duck session. As for the partisanship, um, typically, I, I don't know that uh, Obama's going to have quite the honeymoon that he had back in 2000, ultimately 2009. But um, I, I do think, perhaps, that there will be things, some, some activity at the beginning. Um, will it last? Uh, I, I'm not as hopeful. Um, I do think that, again, as, and again, the House particularly is hyper-partisan. They have to run for re-election every two years. And I guarantee you, all th those members of the House, particularly the new ones, they are concerned about their re-election right sure, around the corner. Absolutely. Quite frankly, I mean, they, they started on their re-election for uh, 2014 yesterday. So um, how long this will last? Again, so their interest is high. Public opinion will probably be a little bit higher. Uh, so they, they do need to get something done, but I, I, I wonder how long it will be before they actually start to go back to uh, their old ways, ultimately. And the final question, do you think we'll go off the fiscal cliff? That's, um, I... The $16 as, trillion dollar question here. <laughs> it is a $16 trillion dollar question. Um, you know, I, in thinking about it, and I, I think... There is, I, I do have some, some very significant concern because if you look at it, I mean, we had the best deal makers on this, uh, you know, the, this special committee that was supposed to trim money from the budget. Mm -hmm. These were the best deal makers that the Senate had to offer. They couldn't cut a deal. And that's uh, sad, very sad. Absolutely. Um, and the and they know, had a whole year to take care of these issues. They had a whole year to take care of these issues. And in, you know, in, uh, you know, there's a recent book out talking, you know, uh, John Boehner and President Obama were very close again to an agreement, and it, again it, it fell apart. So there is, um, there seems to be a, there's a pattern here. Um, and, and again, we're, we're, we're getting very close to this fiscal cliff, and, and I, I do hope that they can. Uh, cut some sort of deal, and I, I think there are some deals to be made at this point in time. And again, the American public, being the election is just over, our attention is still focused on what what is going on. So um, <clears throat> they should be very motivated. If they weren't before, they should be very motivated, at least for their political career, to to get this done. But it, again, history. On it, it, the history other hand, is, on the other hand, history does not show that this is that. Uh, that there's much. That this is a recipe. For, that this is a recipe for success. No, I mean, well, really, if you look at it, and, and as you kind of already said, it's the same recipe. So I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's kind of like when I cook. I, I, the matter, it's like yeah, I put the same recipe. It, it turns out not very good. Um, so <laughs> that's what my wife does all the cooking. So uh, I guess my cooking and, and uh, Congress and the presidency all all kind of have something in common. Uh, turn out not so well. Uh, it's all duck soup. Du yes, duck soup. I was trying to think of a nicer word to say on the air. So. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, I certainly hope you've enjoyed our show here today. We have had uh, Dr. Chad Kinsella here. He brought three students with him here today. 
Tanisha Elder, thank you so much for coming here today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having and me. We have enjoyed it very much. Jameson Nichols, Nicholas, thank you for coming out here today. Thank you so much. I had such a great time. I enjoyed it. Thank oh, you. good. I'm glad. We'll have to do this again. And Richard Stone, thank you for coming out here today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. All right. That's going to do it for us right here on WCRS right here in Greenwood. I guess we'll join some music in progress. Hey, that's it. Bye-bye, everybody.